if you want to make good solar cells, then you need to manufacture the, the material very, very accurately down to the nanometer scale. And that's my vision essentially, to make big modules better by looking at very small scales. My name is Alex Redinger and I'm a researcher in my home country at the University of Luxembourg. Um, I'm an Attract Fellow, which is a grant that has been given to me by the Fonds National de la Recherche, and I'm working on solar cells. When you see solar cells in the field, you usually don't realize that this is actually a stack of different materials composed of different elements, and they all interact with each other. And this is what makes solar cells so fascinating, but also so complicated. This is the heart of the solar cell, so this is where the light gets absorbed, and it's a couple of micrometers thick. And this is actually what you see on top here. This is the coating. Most of the stuff that you see here is glass. If I draw this in the right dimensions on the blackboard, the glass has to extend 200 meters downwards. In my research, I'm now very interested in these interfaces, so interfaces between different materials. And I'm looking at these interfaces because they determine to a large extent whether a solar cell works good or bad. Because here, materials intermix, we form a lot of defects, good or bad, and we need to tune the properties in a very accurate manner in order to really be get a good working device out in the end. I will usually not look at finished devices, but I will look at devices which at some point during the synthesis process has been interrupted. This can be from, from the university here, this can also be by, by external partners, other universities that are interested in having such a technique that I am now using. This is a scanlink tunneling microscope or an atomic force microscope. And uh, this enables us essentially to look at surfaces with atomic uh, resolution, with atomic precision. Since we are looking so local, we also see all the dirt. And this is why this microscope is essentially embedded into a vacuum chamber. We can load in some samples and then we can transfer these uh, samples into the main chamber and from that we can then move it into the microscope where we then do our, our investigation. Imagine you buy a car. What type of car do you choose? You can choose like a medium car or a very expensive and good car or the best car ever. And if you want to buy a microscope, then you would like to have the microscope with the highest possible resolution. And this is a microscope which is among the microscope with the highest resolution. And this is an excellent uh, way of making science because you push the boundary more or less as far as you can go. This is the microscope in the end, yeah? so it's actually just a tip. So it's a metallic tip. If you go close enough, so only a few nanometers, what then happens, then you start to measure a sm very small current due to the quantum mechanical tunneling effect. That means we have a current flowing although we are not in contact. And this is now the signal that we use to image. If we change the distance only by one atom, you roughly change the current by a factor of 10. And now let's imagine now we have a surface and we start moving our tip. And now there's a hill. Since we're getting closer, we're actually getting more current. 
So then it retracts the tip to keep the current constant and then continues scanning. And this we do line by line and, uh, and then essentially you get a, a contour plot of your surface topography. And then you start to see all these small little dots which are then individual atoms. And you also see that these rings here, which are characteristic for this kind of material, are actually not all perfect. So you see some holes in there, and sometimes there, there are even two missing. And essentially what you see is actually how matter is, is made of. Uh, and, uh, and that's quite uh, fascinating uh, still, I think. <laughs> we are not only looking at surfaces, so the topography, but we actually also would like to get a lot more information about our materials. And uh, for that we have different measurement modes which are included in these instruments. This all essentially makes this technique very powerful. Probably the biggest step in the scientific career is, is moving from a postdoc level to an independent researcher which takes his own decisions and this attract project actually enables this because it enables me to set up a group so there's enough funding but it also gives a long-term perspective here at the university. It's like building a house. You can design your house the way you want and I can design my laboratory in, in the way I want it. And uh, that's actually very nice. <laughs>